Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in section 5.4, looking at the predicative use of adjectives. That is to say, adjectives used in sentences like this one. The law is holy. Just take a second to spot the adjective. Can you spot it? Yeah, of course you can. The adjective is this little baby right here, holy. And we say we are predicating the quality of being holy, holiness, of the law. We're predicating holiness of the law, and we are doing so with the verb to be, is. Now, this section is a little bit of a source of confusion for students, because it introduces two or three slightly tricky ideas all in one go. And so what I want to do is to encourage you, please, if you've not read this section, please go back and read it, because that will help you to make sense of what I'm going to talk about now. And if you've just glanced through it thinking, yeah, 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 whatever, Really seriously, take two minutes, read it carefully, because I'm going to talk about why we say this is a compliment, what the word order is, and the word order thing is not so difficult, but it is very, very important, because it turns out that this word, the crucial dis dif difference, the crucial distinction between this sentence and the attributive use of adjectives, doesn't even always appear in Greek, and so the word order is really, really important to help you distinguish the predicative from the attributive use of adjectives. So if at this point you're confused, thinking, what on earth is he talking about? You do need to go back and read. It's like a page and a half, guys. Come on, page 58 and 59. Stop the video, come back in two minutes' time. There we are, and now we're ready to go. Now, let's think first uh, why Jeremy Duff quite rightly makes such a big fuss of saying that this is a compliment and not an object. Well, let's think about it conceptually first. Think about what this sentence means in contrast to the following sentence. The woman sees the man. What does this sentence mean in contrast to this one? Well, grammatically, what's going on in the second sentence is very easy to see. There's this thing, this lady, who's over here, doing this to this chap, who's over here. There are two things. There's a woman, the subject, in the nominative, and there's another thing, a different thing, the object, and because it's a different thing, it's the object, and it goes in a different case, the accusative case, as distinct from the nominative case, to tell you that it's a different thing and that it relates in a different way to the verb. The verb is telling you what the subject is doing to the object. To repeat myself and to wear you all out with tedium, there's one thing doing something to another thing. So, subject, verb, object. Right, now look at this sentence. Superficially, you might think it's very similar, because you've got something, subject, well it is a subject, the law, you've got a verb, and then you've got something else. Oh, maybe this is the object, but hold on just a second, wait, 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 wait. Whereas in this sentence, the woman is a different thing from the man, in this sentence, the law is not a different thing from holy, not in the same sense. Holy is not a separate thing. First up, holy is an adjective, not a noun anyway. And secondly, it's not a separate quality from the, the subject. Really, the verb to be is telling you that this is a quality of the subject. To put it another way, in this sentence, the woman sees the man, the verb tells you that one thing does something to another thing. But in this sentence, the law is holy, the verb doesn't do anything of the sort. It's not telling you that the law is doing something too holy, is it? It's telling you that holiness is a quality of the law. So, from a sort of linguistic, philosophical point of view, this is a completely different kind of sentence. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is not an object. The verb is doesn't take an object. It takes what grammarians call a complex. Meant so called because it completes complement, completes the idea begun by the subject and the verb. The law is holy. Now, that's the linguistic conceptual aspect of things. The reason it matters grammatically is 
Because holy is not a different thing from the law, this and this both go in the same case. And of course, this will be in the nominative case because it's the subject. This also goes in the nominative case. And the number one mistake that people make when they translate sentences that have Amy or the verb to be in them is that they translate the complement in the accusative. Don't do it. Don't be giving me your translations of the law is holy where you've got hagi on. It's just wrong. Hagi os. Because it's not a separate thing, it's not an object, it's a complement, so it goes in the nominative. Okay, so that's the first thing. The first thing that Dove talks about, and there's a little bit of uh, explanation and background to it. Right. Now on to the second thing that he talks about. I'm going to get rid of this because that's just going to confuse us. Try and get rid of all that because that one just confuses us as well. Whoopie doo. There we are. There we are. Get rid of that. Okay. So the law is holy. In Greek, you can use adjectives predicatively in one of two ways. You can say the law is holy, or you can say holy is the law. And both of them kind of make sense in English, don't they? The law is holy. Well, that's just how we say things in English. And holy is the law. Well, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, Psalm 1. We use that uh, kind of word order occasionally, perhaps slightly archaically, but it isn't unfamiliar to us. Now, just as with the attributive use of the adjective, I wanted to get you going, going around chanting in your head, it's the holy law, or it's the law the holy, the good man, or the man the good, the lost sheep, or the sheep the lost. Now what I want you to do, when you're thinking about the predicative use of the adjective, is to drive your family, or your flatmates, or your church equally nuts by going around saying, the law is holy, or holy is the law. Because if you learn to recognise the word order in English, it will be so much easier when you come across it in Greek. Okay, so now you've got the picture from the first little section of this chapter that the adjective is a complement, not an object, and therefore it goes in the same case, as well as, of course, the same number and gender as the subject. And then secondly, we've got the word order. So now we can translate both of these into Greek. You ready? So the law is holy. So the law is very simple. It's going to be in the nominative because it is the subject. Is, oh, I broke my rule, didn't I? I didn't translate the verb first. Okay, well, it is third person singular. So Amy A. Estin. Uh, come on, Steve, get the words in the right order. Third person singular, it is, the law is, and then holy. It's going to need to agree, obviously, with honomos in number and gender, it also needs to agree in case, because it's a complement. Amy doesn't take an object, it takes a complement in the nominative. So, honomos est in hagios. The law is holy. So, how do you think we write holy is the law? Well, there we are. How about that? It is exactly the same. Est in ho. Nomos. Notice that honomos is still the subject, even though the order of the words has been reversed, just as Duff explains in this section. Right. Now, once we've got this in place, you can start to see how we would tweak this sentence if, let's say, we had more than one law. Let's imagine that we were saying there are two or three or four laws, or all the laws of the Old Testament. We want to say hoi nomoi. Well, the laws are, so third person singular, Amy, A, Estin, Esmen, Esther, Asin. And what do we have to do to this? Well, it can't be sitting in the singular. When this is in the plural, it's hagioi. The laws are holy. And what about if we wanted to change the gender? Suppose instead of saying that the laws, get rid of that, instead of saying that the laws 
are holy. You wanted to say that um, hi Adele Phi, the sisters are holy. Well, hold on, this has got to match in number and in case and in gender. So Hagioi, can't be Hagioi, has to be Haggy I. Hi Adelphi, Asin, Haggy I, and so on. So you start to see the principle. We agree in number and in case and in gender because this doesn't take an object in the accusative, it takes a complement in the nominative. I thought I'd forgotten it then, didn't you? I had. I had indeed. All right, now the final complexity is the one I warned you about at the beginning. This verb is, which so far has been the thing you've clung on to to help you distinguish the predicative use of the adjective from the attributive use, doesn't always appear in Greek sentences. Duff gives an example in Romans 7.12 where Paul the Apostle does not say the law is holy, he just says the law holy. And you could just as easily say in Greek, holy, the law. Just write it out. Honomos, hagios, or hagios, ho, nomos. And so now you're all thinking, good heavens, how are we supposed to tell the difference between this, the predicative use of the adjective, and the previous one that we looked at, which is the attributive use of the adjective. The answer is word order. The word order is different. Do you remember when we looked at the attributive use of the adjective, we wrote the two options. Hoi ho, hagios nomos, and ho nomos, ho, hagios. Those are the two options. And neither of them can really be mistaken for this one, can they? It's either the law holy, or holy the law, which is predicative, or it's ho hagios nomos, the holy law, or honomos or hagios, the law, the holy, which is attributive. Now, sounds all a bit complicated? Don't worry. What's actually going to happen is that you're going to get used to this quite quickly. And you'll also get used to seeing one other small tip which will help you again and again and again in identifying and translating these little babies. When you see something which ought to be a sentence, and doesn't have a verb in it. That is the dead giveaway that there is what I want to call an invisible Amy. And that is clearly what you've got in here. If I told you that these are complete sentences or complete clauses, and you'd say, no, they're not, got no verb in them, then pretty soon, in about five seconds, you'd realize, oh yes, it must have an invisible Amy of some kind in there and likewise in here because every sentence and every clause needs to have a verb in it. In the next video we're going to take a look at some of those examples in section 5.4, uh, the translation examples, you've got eight in there, maybe do about um, three or four of those just to give you, get, give you a hand of getting into these a little bit more. But uh, as I said before, um, keep working at this, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, uh, five or six days a week, and we will have you not only understanding this but reading the whole of the New Testament in a year or two, no trouble at all. Okay, God bless, bye for now.